Zimbabwe and welcome to um, MDC Zimbabwe, our current affairs department where we're looking at issues that are happening in Zimbabwe at the moment. Yesterday we had the announcement of the monetary policy uh, statement by uh, Dr. Mangunjwa. So right now we want to understand and want to unpack that document and understand what it exactly uh, entails to the people of Zimbabwe. Joining me is Honorable Tindaibiti, the MDC Vice uh, national chairperson and a former finance minister with us here. Honorable Bitti, thank you so much uh, for affording us this opportunity to talk to you. Good afternoon. The monetary policy statement yesterday. Do we have a new currency? Uh, absolutely. Uh, and it's called the real transfer gross system RTGS uh, dollar, the longest. Uh, a named currency in the world, yeah. uh, but it's a disaster. It's, it's a voodoo economics, it's a casino economics, it's feja feja economics. It's not acceptable, and as Zimbabweans, we should uh, reject that. When you say that there is a, a new currency coming up on your Twitter account, a lot of people came guns blazing at you and saying, You know, you, know, you, you are a joke. And here we are, and there is this other teacher story. Had they you seen it coming? Yes, they wanted. They actually wanted to introduce uh, this new currency at the beginning of February uh, 2019. So, and their logic was very simple, and it is the logic that was played out yesterday. Their logic was that we already had a, a currency, a fiat currency, a fake currency, in the form of the RTGS balances, in the form of the bond notes. So they reckon that by simply converting the RTGS into a new U Zimbabwean dollar, they could get away with, uh, with, with it. They also, as, as John exposed yesterday, they also calculated that of the 11 billion US dollars, sorry, the RTGS balances in stock, 90% mm -hmm. uh, uh, of them are actually owned and controlled by big players. In particular, Delta Cooperation, in particular, EcoCash, in particular, INSCO, in particular, the Mikus Group through its retail outlets, and uh, the OK Bazaars uh, Group. So, in fact, they started negotiating with these people for a discount on those balances or for a conversion of those balances into long term paper. With the rest of us who don't have money, they were just going to. Uh, compensate, but with a with a haircut, uh, you know, you get twenty percent in a dollar or forty cents in a in a dollar. But when we tweeted, it threw the cat amongst the pigeons. Mm -hmm. uh, it was Armageddon. They didn't know how to 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 handle that. Mm -hmm. So you had the response from John. You had the response from uh, Mutuing Ube. You had the response from the Minister of Information, mm -hmm. all vigorously uh, denying, denying this. That, yeah. But two weeks later, without shame, they introduced a new currency called the RTGS uh, dollar. Surely they owe Zimbabweans an apology. Mm -hmm. But the real apology is the fact that they've effectively uh, nationalized, they've effectively dollar devalued every existing balance that was in a bank at the present moment. Mm -hmm. Because when you put your money, you put your money in a US dollar account. account yes. When you opened your account in 2009, 2010 and then after, you put your money in a US dollar account. Yes. But suddenly, what you put in there, you put a cow, mm -hmm. now you're getting a pig and an ugly pig called the <laughs> RTGS. Dollar. So, I hope that the legal profession will be mobilized so that we hold accountable this regime. The thing that John doesn't know, the thing that ZANU-PF doesn't know is that leadership consists of two things, mm -hmm. responsibility and accountability. Mm -hmm. This regime is not accountable. Definitely. In 2016, against the protestations, they introduced the bond notes mm -hmm. and some of us the market, we told them that the bond note doesn't work. If you put bad money alongside good money, bad money will displace a, a, a good money. We told them that there will be shortages. We told them that the paro market rate will uh, emerge. Mm -hmm. They refused. In fact, 
John Mangundla put his head on the block. Yes, and, and he said, if it doesn't work, I'm going to resign. He has not resigned. On the contrary, mm. he has gone in to impose more suffering, more decapitation of this economy. Someone should be held to, be, to account. Emerson should be held to account. Mutuving Ube should be held to account. John Panone Mangundla should be held to account. Yeah, and we also have this um, this exchange rate that they've suddenly introduced. Says um, the money in our account is now the RTGS balance, and we are asking what is the rate between uh, in exchange of the United States dollar, and it says between three and four um, dollars to one US dollar. Now, does the government is the government going to multiply whatever balances were in our accounts to reflect the new? Current regime. See, what they've done is very mendacious, it's very dishonest. Mm. Because, number one, they have not repealed Section 43 of the Reserve Bank Act. Okay. And Section 43 of the Reserve Bank Act is the one, say, the one that says there is a bond note. It's the one that says this bond note mm -hmm. is on par with the US dollar. Yes. So, that is still the law of this country. Mm -hmm. That is still so technically. Come Friday, come any day after the 20th of uh, February 2019 when the monetary policy statement was announced, anyone who therefore sells and trades the US dollar on any, on any uh, exchange rate other than the US one to one is actually committing an offense because section 43 has not been amended and only the central bank, so only parliament can amend that. That's dishonesty number one. Dishonesty number two is that they are still maintaining the export retention scheme. They are still maintaining the export retention scheme. That means that exporters, huge exporters like Zimplas, mm -hmm. uh, like the mining houses, still in tobacco farmers, mm -hmm. they still have their foreign currency uh, being taken by the government. But surely if you have liberalized, then you must allow those companies to keep their foreign currency mm -hmm. so that the excess will then go on the auction market so that people can buy, including uh, the government. But you cannot retain a control and then at the same time pretend that you have liberalized. Yeah. You have not liberalized. Mm -hmm. Once you liberalize, liberalize both the supply and the demand. Mm -hmm. So you can't liberalize demand auction but mm -hmm. supply the exporters you are taking their money you are nationalizing their money and i hope that the big companies the zimplats of this world will for the first time have the courage to go to their lawyers and approach the high court approach the constitutional court because this abnormality should not continue mm -hmm. and as i've said before the rbz's retention of export earnings is unconstitutional because any money collected should go to the Consolidated Revenue Fund, mm -hmm. should go to Parliament, should go to Parliament for accountability. And, for accountability. Mm -hmm. and therefore, Parliament should distribute it in the budget in terms of Section uh, uh, 305 of the Constitution of, of Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. So the Constitution has been broken. But you know why, what, Yvonne? Mm -hmm. They are maintaining this artificial exchange rate. They are maintaining it because as long as the U.S. dollar remains a commodity, as, and as long as some of it, some of us, or some of them can go to the Reserve Bank and access it at a nominal price, mm -hmm. while the rest of us is up, uh, acquiring it at a premium, there will be arbitrage. Mm -hmm. And we know who is going to go to the Reserve Bank to get the money. It's ZANU PF for chefs. Mm -hmm. It's the elites of ZANU PF. It's the who is who of ZANU PF, starting with the highest offices in this land. And that's not acceptable. The third thing which they have done, which is unacceptable, which is not allowed by the law, the Reserve Bank has still retained its quasi-fiscal activities. Mm -hmm. The monetary policy statement says, forget about fuel, about electricity and other commodities, medicines, will continue dealing with them in the old manner. In other words, the Reserve Bank will still continue with its quasi-fiscal activities, sourcing money for fuel, sourcing money for energy, sourcing money for drugs and so forth. That is the problem. That is the problem. The Reserve Bank has no business in the business of uh, 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 energy, electricity. Let the market deal with it. Yeah. In my time, we didn't do it because the market can source 
if you will, all you need to do, and all that was required, you vote was very simple: demonetize the bond note. Number two, uh, 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 dollarize the economy, strengthen the regime of multiple currencies. Number three, protect and ring fence RTGs balances in people's accounts mm. held in banks. Number four, stop and delete and eliminate the export retention scheme. Number five, pursue macroeconomic stability, in particular fiscal consolidation, because the budget deficit is contributing to this madness. Mm -hmm. So, as I used to say, live within your means, eat what you kill. Mm -hmm. If you do that, then prepare to join the Rand Monetary Union, because the US dollar is overvalued. Mm -hmm. So we need to uh, devalue it by adopting the Rand. But they've gone, instead of dollarizing, they've gone the opposite. They've de-dollarized the economy. So we are back to 2006. Mm -hmm. We're back to square zero. And you know what happens when we have our own currency. Zeros will increase. Mm -hmm. Hyperinflation will increase. Shortages will increase. Bastardization will increase. We have a problem of governance in this country. We have a problem of legitimacy in this country. These people have failed. Emerson Munangagwa is a Rwambiwa. Zamuramba. Zogutongai. <laughs> All right, uh, there's, um, there's an element of um, people being asked to use their US dollars, their nostril um, accounts. Maybe you can also help us um, interrogate further. Um, the 30 day um, ultimatum to say you must have used up your balances by such and such a time. Can you explain that for us? What they are saying basically to exporters mm. that you must use uh, your. Uh, Exports proceed within 30 days, otherwise, it goes to the market. Okay. Yeah, but but or they actually appropriate it now. Two things arise firstly, the monetary policy statement was silent, and this is a very important point, Yvonne. Mm -hmm. It was quiet and silent on the exchange rate to be used between the US dollar earned by the exporter mm -hmm. and the rate to be used by the Reserve Bank when it takes over that man. And I still maintain that that is the reason why they've maintained the artificial one bond, one US. Because they want to steal the monies of exporters. Mm -hmm. They'll buy that, they'll uh, appropriate that at the rate of US, one is to one. Secondly, there's something wrong and unconstitutional if you have to determine the manner and the process and speed to which I should spend my money. Yeah. And with many of these companies, their orders take a long time to place. Mm -hmm. So 30 days is a small window. So I, once again, I hope that these companies will have the courage to go to banks. But there's a po another point which ar ar arises. You recall that in the last monetary policy statement uh, of October 2018, John Panone Tsamangundla created two accounts. Yes. The RTGS a, a Nostro RTGS and the Nostro FCA. Yes. Now I want I want to warn Zimbabweans. I'm not a prophet, but I'm not a marabout, <laughs> but most things that I say come through. Those of us who are keeping money as Nostro FCA, mm -hmm. this regime is going to run out of money, and as has happened in the past, those accounts will be expropriated. Mark my words. And we've seen um, the the movements that the government has been doing uh, to other nations with their so-called mega deals are happening and stuff and they are taking um, money from those same accounts paying in foreign currency for the chartered planes that they use honorable how, how confident can the people of Zimbabwe be that they only have money on the market yeah so you raise two things mm. first is the capacity of Zimbabwe to attract foreign direct investment. Mm. The, the, the Mugabe who was attracting an average of 400 million US dollars per year according to UNCTAD, the United Nations uh, uh, Commission for Trade and Development. Mm. With Amazon, we are attracting zero. There is no one who puts money in a country where you cannot get, get that money out, where you can't even get that money out of a bank. It doesn't happen. There's no man, no one who put money in a country where you are raping women, you are assaulting uh, people, 
you are torturing people, you are conducting mass trials, you are shutting down the internet. Who does that for Christ's sake in this day and age? So investment will not come in. There is no one who put money in a country where the macroeconomic situation is such a terrible a disequilibrium. You have got a government that spends money as if it goes on trees. Mm. You have got a government that spends money and eats money as if it's consuming an aphrodisiac. It won't happen. <laughs> you will not attract a single uh, cent. Mm. Then the second thing which you raise is the extravagance of the regime. Mm. How does the president of one of the poorest, or rather the self-proclaimed a president of one of the poorest countries of the African continent mm. goes to Russia with a bag in bow, but riding a dreamliner that costs 74,000 US dollars per hour to hire, it eludes my wisdom. It's total and absolute craziness. Mm. The optics are not right. And so even Mugabe, who used to hire and abuse his old 1976 Boeing 707, was better. Mm. This is shameless. This is a shame. This is unacceptable. And we have people who actually um, you know, are dying in a mine in the battlefield, and the government is coming out and saying, uh, can you assist us with $100,000? Yvonne, this regime is committing slow genocide against the people of Zimbabwe. There is a Gugura Wundi in slow motion being implemented and perpetrated by Emerson Dambuzo, Munangagwa, and the rest of his crew. Number one, you have a total collapse of the health system. There are no drugs. The few that are there are being sold in US dollars to a population wherein 95% of it are unemployed, 76% of it are living in extreme poverty, surviving on less than US 35 cents a day. Chitunguiza is the capital city of Taona, accident, where people survive on 35 cents a day. A little cock of cooking fat, a little plate of uh, cooking milli meal, and four leaves of, of, of vegetable. That's how our people are living. So look now at the social indices. The infant mortality rates, 96 out of a thousand babies are dying upon birth. Look at the, at the maternal mortality rates, 87 mothers out of a thousand are dying on giving a childbirth. Look at the life expectations, look at for, for both men and women. Before the GNU, the life expectancy had lowered to 34 uh, for, for, for men and 30 for, 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 for women. We, we increased that during uh, the GNU, it went back into the 50s. Now it's crawling now, 38 for, uh, for men, 36 for women. Mm. Slow genocide. Then you've got road traffic accidents. Then you've got the mining disasters, including the one at Battlefield. The president, the self-proclaimed president of the country did not even go to visit those people. Mm. The biggest disease affecting this country is a crisis of legitimacy, a crisis of governance. But the number one thing is that these people have no love for the people. These people have no love for the people. That's why they'll shoot six, seven civilians as they did on the 1st of August, 2018. That's why those six shoot civilians, hundreds of civilians, all after the 12th of January, 2019. That's the problem with our country. We are being run by a rogue regime that has no love or solidarity for the people. What kind of a regime unleashes the army on its people? It's unheard of. It's barbaric. So we have a problem. We have a serious problem in this country. Now to wrap up, Honorable Bidja, I want to talk about the latest conviction that was given, handed out to you at the, the court for um, announcing the presidential result. <laughs> what does that mean to you as a lawyer, as a member of parliament, and as a citizen of this nation? Look, I've been convicted it's obviously going to affect uh, you know, my profession, my right to, to look after my family. Uh, I'm not sure whether the Law Society of Zimbabwe will renew my practicing certificate, uh, but at least I'm alive, uh, Yvonne. There are some people who have paid with, uh, with uh, their lives. I think that uh, 
what is happening is unsus- uh, uh, you know, un- 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 unacceptable. You cannot have a systematic assault and closure of a political party. All our senior leaders, we've got 48 MPs right now, that are either in remand or out of remand or facing trials. We have over 20, 30 councillors that are either on remand or facing trial. Mugabe was better. Mugabe, <coughs> Mugabe regarded the MDC as an inconvenience, but an inconvenience all the same that he could not wish away, that he could not rub us. The problem with Emerson and his lot is that they regard the MDC as cockroaches. They regard us as illegitimates. So they want us to see being totally crushed, totally squashed like cockroaches. But I've got a message for him. It will not happen. The MDC is so huge. The people of Zimbabwe are so huge. They want change. They want legitimacy. They want their magic that we got for on the 30th of July, 2018. All right. Thank you so much, Honorable Bitty, for that um, um, wonderful time. Um, we pray that everything will work out for the good of Zimbabwe. So Zimbabwe, that is just a tip of what we have experienced with the M- MPS that was announced yesterday by Dr. John Mangucha. Thank you so much for joining us. we we'll meet again on other platforms. God bless you.